Now, Mike Perry had tweeted true. something about possibly having an exciting opponent in Fort Lauderdale uh, April the 27th. Can you uh, add to that? Who? Uh, Mike Perry. Mike Perry. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, let, me, let me see if I got that written down here somewhere. Ooh. Uh, Florida I, fight? I love me some Mike Perry. I do, too. He is fun to watch. He's a character. Yeah, yeah we're, we're talking about him and Ben Saunders. Oh, shit, man. Ooh. Oh, see, yeah. I like that. That's Killer B, man. That's a great fight. That's great. Hats off yep. to put that together. And of course, uh, Masvidal, Leon Edwards. I mean, I guess that's got to happen uh, uh, soon, sooner rather than later. Um, you know, th that fight's always going to be there. Masvidal's ranked number five right now. <coughs> Edwards is number 10. Okay. So we are working on something for Masvidal and Edwards, but not each other. Oh, it might be one of those things where they can each afford another fight or so, and that animosity will still be able to, to push a fight between them a little yeah, bit down that, the road. Listen, that, that, the hatred between those two isn't going anywhere. So when, when the right time, when the time is right, um, we'll, we'll make it happen. We're, we're actually talking about Ben Askren versus Masvidal right now. Oh, I'd watch that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really interesting fight. Wow. I love that. And uh, and uh, what about uh, Khabib? Is there any update on him, or is he still going to stay out the year? Yeah, he'll he'll be back in September. And and does that? Uh, how do you feel about that? Does that piss you off, or do you kind of understand where he's coming from, or do you think it's just a bad move? Well, no, it's 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 one of the things with him anyway. He, you know, he's on suspension, and then uh, and then he doesn't fight during Ramadan. So oh, that, okay, that puts him at September. Okay, so that there would have been that anyway, uh, with, without him even saying that. Right, exactly. And uh, do you you see any more type of cross promotional stuff? I mean, you know, uh, Mighty Mouse and, and, and Askren has worked out fairly well so far, at least for the UFC. Uh, not just with the, with his win over Lawler, but with the whole uh, the, this the name coming over here. Have you guys uh, discussed any more any more of that type of stuff? Uh, no. Listen, if there's somebody there that we would be interested in, we would always look at that option. But uh, but no, there's there's nothing we're looking at right now. And uh, there's no type of ever cross promotion. The thing was the, the thing was with Askren is that I, you know I, I don't know I don't want to speak out of turn. It's what I think is sure. that he you know there wasn't a good relationship there, and he just decided to retire, and they were cool with that. So you know when I knew he was available and and. Pretty much, they weren't going to use him, and he was just going to retire. I said, well, "Now's probably the perfect time to pick Askren up." Uh, I don't see any obviously because there's only only Cyborg in the uh, featherweight division with Amanda being the champion. What's going to happen with that division? Is there is there any new possible additions to it? Yeah, yeah, we're we're we're, we're going to continue to build on that division, and obviously, uh, you know, me and I'm sure everybody else wants to see the rematch. Yeah, I would like to see that too, because even though normally a lot of times in a first round KO, uh, it's like, well, that fight happened quickly. But I think everybody knows that Cyborg, uh, it, it, that's not a typical uh, uh, loss for her at all. Well, not that it's a typical loss. She finally met her match. Yep. And, uh, you know, but she, she's been dominant for so long. Uh, Amanda Nunes wants to fight Holly Holm next, and then her next fight will probably be Cyborg again. Amanda is, I mean, I don't know who, I, I saw her winning, but I didn't see her knocking her out in the first round. I wonder if Cyborg underestimated her power. I think, yeah, I, I, listen, there, there's no doubt about it. Amanda Nunes is the baddest woman ever. There's, there's no doubt about it. She is the, the GOAT of the women's division. Yeah, she really is. Um, and also, congratulations, by the way, on re-upping for seven more years. Um, I hope that has some type of reflection on Matt and I re-upping. Let's uh, let's just. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that you're you're, you're you're safe. I don't know about Matt. Oh fuck! I can't do it without him. <laughs> I know you love me. <laughs> and, and Dana, can I ask you too? Just another bit of upheaval. I can't do it without we two. A couple now. We, well, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we definitely are. And the bottom is who you think it is. It's me. <laughs> Podcast life partners. I got it. <laughs> no, I say that now. But if you said Jim, we're doubling your money and Matt's out, I'd be like, fuck him. I love Matt. Hundred <laughs> percent. Hey, 
Now listen, <laughs> no, we have to ask you too. Also, uh, this this whole thing with T.J. Dillashaw kind of came as a shock. And do you know anything more about that? And because he literally, I guess he they said he tested positive for something uh, that was a, a, in in. Uh, in, in uh, uh, performance, in, in, in competition, in competition uh, you know, uh, a test, and then he vacates the uh, the belt. Like, what, what's going on with that? Yeah, I don't know if it's because they, they, they don't announce it because of the HIPAA laws in New York, or I, I don't know what the deal is. But uh, yeah, that, that that's as good as it's going to get until anything else comes out. Okay, I'm because I'm, I'm wondering if it had anything to do with the weight cut, just because of when it was. I mean, I mean, I certainly don't think the guy is doing you know steroids an hour before the fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm with you, man. I just, I, it's hard to comment on shit. Yeah, when no, you don't, it's fair. When you don't know anything. Um, you know? I, I just wanted to know. And by the way, how about uh, Anthony Pettis? I mean, look, it's not a you know shock that he won because I think he can beat anybody. But I mean, to, to the second round Superman punch knockout uh, of Wonder Boy. Uh, what's next for Pettis? It is pretty shocking that he won. Actually, I mean, if you look at Anthony Pettis. He was ranked number uh, number eight in, in the light, lightweight division, and uh, you know to move up and take on Wonder Boy, who I think when they fought Saturday night was ranked number three. You know he had the two real tough fights with Woodley. All the people that, that, that Thompson has beat, a weight class above him, and for him to win in such spectacular fashion, and and Wonder Boy was out out. It wasn't like yep. he knocked him down and was hitting. He was out from that punch. So it was a very impressive win for Anthony Pettis and, uh, and really kick-starting his career again. And you know what? Wonder Boy looked really good in the first round and good into really that good. second round. Um, you know, it didn't. It wasn't like well, he didn't have like you watched the Willis Blades fight, and you're like, yeah, Willis. Willis said he froze, but he just didn't look particularly uh, good throughout the fight. But, but uh, Thompson looked great. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Listen, uh, there's no doubt in the, in the Willis fight, he, he couldn't stop the takedown when he got down. There was nothing he could do when he was on his back. That was whatever. But if you look at, at the fight with uh, Pettis and Thompson, I love the game plan. I, I don't know if you guys could see on TV as much as we could there at the arena, but he was busting Stephen Thompson's legs up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I figured that was the game plan with that karate stance, the way he bounces up and down, he was able to land leg kicks outside, inside, on both legs, and Thompson would switch up stances, and uh, he was really getting his legs, and then the, the plan was get him into the later rounds and then slug it out with him, and it worked. I wonder if that was, because you know, Thompson threw a kick and put him up against the cage, and then jumped back a little slower than he normally would have, and was not able to get away from that punch, and I wonder if that was partially because he was being kicked if he lost a little bit of, uh, of bounce that early. There's no doubt about it. I, I guarantee you, his legs, his legs are hurting today. Uh, um, Pettis did a, a great job of, of, from the very first round, starting to attack those legs. And by the time he got the knockout, Wonder Boy's legs were pretty busted. And uh, you know what else is interesting is all the people. So when we went to that landmark Clifton place, those guys, born and raised Cleveland, um, grew up around it. The restaurant owners or bar owners. You know what they? broke my heart you know what they told me about lebron james what doesn't tip shitty tipper that's so hard to believe yeah we're the billion dollars yeah you don't tip how crazy is that and uh, and when they first told me like oh they're just hating because he went to la but then it was different business owners that i met like oh he's been here yeah just doesn't tip man i guess he sh like after the games he'd shut down this restaurant and you know the restaurant would usually close at like say 11 but because lebron would get out of the game and post game uh you know media and change and shower so they would stay open just for him and he'd go there all the time never tipped him once like doesn't tip or just bad doesn't tip wow isn't that crazy that is crazy have you heard of that that sucks Uh, but, he, but here's the thing. So, so if he doesn't, so can they hear what he said? So he's saying he doesn't, he's spending probably, I don't know, a ton of money to stay open and he's paying the bill for him and his boys. The waitress doesn't see any of that money. The waitress who's grinding her ass off or him who's getting paid minimum wage and he's bet and he or she's banking on tips. You screw her over, man. But also you're just your Nike deals, a billion dollars. What the fuck do you care? How does that happen? 
And then, you know, I was talking to Derek, who is half black. And I was talking to Son, who's Indian. And I said, is it a cultural thing? Is tipping a culture thing? Because in general, the stigma is different cultures don't, they, they really don't tip well or don't tip at all. Like if you've been, like a chin getting all tied in here. So if <laughs> chin's all, uh, if so, like when you went to England, since they don't, they don't do oh, tips. Uh, was it Australia? I think Australia. Yes. You, I, you, I, they I don't know. do tips. Yeah, yeah. They don't do any tipping. The service is awful <laughs> because they're like, bitch, I'm going to pay $12 an hour. No matter what, would I hurry and bring you this diet Coke? Or if I fucking take my sweet ass time, it does not matter to me. So, I mean, I, I couldn't believe when, when I heard that, is there anything worse? My thing is, doesn't, I mean, he's at such a high level where he dropped, probably just zones all of it out. But if I, if I go into a new barber and they, they, they could draw a dick in my head, but if they know who I am, I'm like, well, I can't not tip the dude well, because as soon as I leave, then it's a, it's a, it's a branch. He's going to go, dude, that shop kid's a dick, doesn't tip. He tells his friend, he tells his friend, just like this is happening now to LeBron, mm. but LeBron's on such a higher level. You'd think that you don't want to be known as that man, especially when you've got just, just let's take out his basketball deal, take out all his other deals, his production company, his movies, everything, his HBO deal, it, take all that away. Just for sneakers, he signed a billion dollar contract with Nike and you can't throw a couple hundred bucks everywhere you go. Oh man, I'm a LeBron fan. That broke my heart. That's a bummer. Isn't it a bummer? Yeah. It's like, God damn it. <sighs> it's such a bummer, dude. I'll tell you what, now that LeBron's there, you know who's the king of that town? Stipe. Yeah. Everywhere I went. St dude, St what do you think Stipe? Stipe's next fight. What do you think Stipe this? Stipe this. Him and LeBron, man. LeBron's out. Stipe's our guy. Wow. He's more He's more like them than LeBron is, right? Born and raised there. Blue collar. Fucking world champion. Former fighter. world champion firefighter, so like they fucked with Stipe there. I, I if you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.